Thank you for your question. And um, so actually, to, to my perspective, they're very much linked. Our primary investment in growth is product, is investment in product. And we're doing a number of things in product. Um, the, the things we've talked about at a general level is kind of making our product more modular. There's a slightly more macro riff here, which is that we were adversarial with IT structurally um, until recently. We were adversarial because from our perspective, there's a learning process where they had to build these things. Now there's a myriad of companies. That, that they're all honestly technically hard to, to indistinguishable doing data lakes and all sorts of things that help IT people build something that is working for them to do certain things. And we were adversarial because they were like, okay, this foundry thing, yeah, great, but we've already built these things. You, you would replace this. It may, honestly could also make us look bad. No one wants it. Also, the average sale price for Palantir foundry across our business, I think last year was like 6.5 million. Most IT people, I and mean, most IT people prefer a small bite and consumption. You can argue whether that's the right model, but you know, instead of fighting them, it's probably better to figure out a way to get our product more in their hands. So that, that's kind of the, the known part. What we've been working on recently, which is less known, is what we're really working on is we believe that um, you know, people are paying a lot now for consumption and compute. No critique. But in reality, that's very much like paying for gas and oil exploration. But what people are really going to want is the ability to use the fully digested product. It's like when you drive your car, that's minerals and oil products and all sorts of chemicals built into your car, finished product. So, and we're going to build both modules that are reflective of foundry, but also new ones in areas that we understand and quite frankly, we know will be built in the near future so that things we know are working, things that we suspect will work in the future so that the nodes not only work separately, but can work together. So de, de facto, the, we believe the compute of tomorrow won't be just compute. It will be productized compute. And that's what we're actually working on in rebuilding Foundry. All right. So did Alex Karp just unveil the Palantir Cloud? I wish there was someone out there on YouTube that would do videos about these sort of things. And that, so I as a shareholder won't freak out the next time the stock tips. I do believe they're building a Palantir cloud and I think it's going to be revolutionary. And let's take a look at what that might look like. What might this architecture look like for a Palantir cloud? Um, what people aren't realizing is that Foundry is an integrated development environment that includes everything we need to take data from a raw state to a ready state with an ontology system and all of the engineering ops to support it, right? So integrated GitHub, integrated Python environment, integrated Java environment. They even support, I think, other languages, <laughs> which I'm probably not allowed to talk about. Also integrated with ML ops for model monitoring and deployment, also integrated with low to no code application tools, right? So you can easily, if, if there was a PLTR cloud that let you spin up this stack in AWS, or Azure, or GCP, or all three, and deploy models at edge by integrating Apollo, all of this with an integrated security model, you can bolt on your lake house of choice, whether that's Snowflake, or whether that's Databricks, or whether that's AWS SageMaker. Imagine going to a URL like you know, foundry.palantir.com, entering, uh, you know, it's like using either SSO or signing in with your email, entering your credit card and the stack being spun up instantly and you start integrating data sources. On the networking side, if you're an engineer, that architecture might look a lot like this. This is super easy to do. It's already available from um, Palantir, I believe as a run book. So basically this spins up Foundry in, t in two availability zones inside Amazon. They can do this on their own within their own VPC and set up private link for you. You could select your either VPC peering or private link automatically attached to your Snowflake instances and anything else you want to in your network where all your data sources live. So again, if they built a cloud that included all this, I could spin up hundreds of engineers around the stack. It's a fully operationalized environment to do data science. And we'll do a deep dive in a little bit to look at what they showed us in Palantir for developers to show you that this is a fully integrated development environment to take your data from raw to ready, to build up your transforms and pipelines in Python using PySpark, 
in a fully integrated environment with GitHub, with quality controls, with unit testing, with the ability to operationalize the models and build low-code to no-code React applications on top of it. That's why this product is revolutionary and why a PLTR Cloud, the, the kind CARP is hinting towards, would be an absolute unreal moneymaker. What Francisco is showing you here are the transforms set up uh, in Foundry, in Python, uh, that are going to take your data from raw to ready. You can see that this is transforms Python. Inside here are each of the transforms, and they're just coded out using all of your favorite Python libraries, including PySpark. You can also see Java is supported. Pretty cool, right? And it's fully integrated with unit testing and code, call, code quality and commit checks. This is unreal. All right, so what Logan is showing you here is, remember all those transforms we wrote in Python? They sh the final versions, the clean sets of data show up as object lineages in Palantir's visualization system here. You can attach scheduling for ETLs in here. You can see the source code of the pipeline that was written in the IDE I just showed you. And then you can start to develop the relationships between all of these data sets and model it as an ontology, which can then be used for data science. You go from raw data to ready data, all in record time. And now I know what you're thinking. Codestrap, this is all speculative. They're not gonna do any of it. Well, guess what? Back in September, Palantir released an article with AWS that talks about this exact architecture, okay? I will link to this in the description, but they are showing how Foundry works to operationalize AWS SageMaker. And let me tell you, operationalizing AWS SageMaker and MLOps on AWS is not easy. You're getting all the benefits that I just showed you and they laid it out for you in an article, okay? So if you don't believe me, check this out. Now, if they can find a way to make this cookie cutter, which is totally doable with a SaaS platform that can be multi-tenant, which they can do, and make it as easy to sign up as putting in a credit card, this is going to crush it. It will just like, there is no reason for me to use, you know, uh, Snowflake or Databricks to do data preparation, ML ops, or deployment at edge. This is a superior technology, bar none. So I really, really hope this is what Alex Karp is talking about. So as far as the numbers go, I think the numbers speak for themselves. I was extremely impressed with Palantir. They raised their guidance, in my opinion, nailed their guidance. 102% um, commercial revenue growth in the U.S. year over year. That's amazing. I reached out to Palantir and congratulated them on an outstanding year and an outstanding quarter. And I'm excited to see what the future brings. I know that it all looks gloom and doom now, but I continue to buy. Bought heavy today, bought another 1,500 shares. And I will continue to buy Palantir. Um, I think this is the most important, this is going to be the most important software company in the world.